so I was thinking about what to preach on the Sunday when we have our very first uh, new members uh, ever in the history of the church. We'll never have a Sunday like this ever again. Um, so the title of the message is, Don't Go to Church Anymore. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Don't go to church anymore. Uh, Work with me, folks. <laughs> Don't leave yet. Don't leave yet. We've been um, working with you for years. <laughs> but I was thinking about, you know, my life, I've been a pastor uh, way too long, and uh, in a lot of settings, and I've spent most of my life trying to get people to go to church. I've, I have been a cheerleader for going to church. I have uh, invited. I have gone around and driven around and picked people up and forced them to come against their will. I remember in... in, uh, in college picking up some people that had drunk too much and had thrown up on themselves and I'm trying to get them cleaned up at their house so they could get to church with me and uh, uh, we went up to the prison camps in the mountains in San Diego and talked to them about Jesus and tried to get them to come to church when they got out of jail and uh, it, it, it's been a huge part of my life and uh, and, I, and I for the most part loved serving in a church and and I couldn't wait to go to church myself. It was exciting, it was fun. It was meaningful, it was where I felt like I knew who I was. And, uh, and then a, a few years ago, just before we came out here to Seattle, um, uh, you, know, you know, I got blown up in a, in a church and, and something died inside me and I, I didn't want to go to church anymore. And uh, even special time, like Easter, I'll even say, well, we ought to go to church. No, I, I can't, I'm not walking into any church, doesn't matter, I'm, I can't go to church anymore. And, uh, and then it was almost like God said, well, why don't you just stop going to church? And instead, uh, come out to Seattle and Keep talking to people about Jesus and see if it's possible to not go to church but to actually be the church. Could you do that? Uh, well, I gotta think about it, Lord. I, I'm not gonna just jump in. Um, what would it be like to be the church instead of going to the church? And I, and I thought, okay, that's something I think I could do. And so, you know, five years ago, we started in Karen's house, and, uh, and the rest, you know, is history, trouble-free, <laughs> and uh, uh, miraculously so, and, uh, and I, think, I think we're doing it. I think that we are learning how to be a church together rather than coming and observing and watching. Uh, anybody ever, you know, they have the Husky Stadium down there? They have football games there? <laughs> you go to a football game. I've, I've had friends, and they're good friends because they invite, they say, would you go to the game with me? And we go and we park far away and we walk a long ways and it, and it takes way too much time and the food's too expensive and the seats are too hard, all those things. And often it's raining. And, but we, I, I feel like, you know, at the end of the day, hey, they wanted me to go to the game, I went. Do you know how little my being there had to do with the game? You know? I've actually gone to Seahawks games where I'm the 12th man. <laughs> hey, they honor me at the start of the service, you know? They, they, uh, at the start of the worship service there for football. And up at the top, they have somebody make a little thing, and they do a thing, and everybody cheers, and they're cheering the 12th man, and I go, <laughs> it's humbling. It's really humbling. And I go to the game. Have I made a difference in that game? Have I participated in it? Uh-uh. No. When they go off like they're going to go off to the Super Bowl, they're not sending me a ticket because I'm so important to them. Even third string players get to go. I don't. <laughs> I, have you ever gone to a movie? Somebody you want to go to a movie? Sure, let's go to a movie. Eileen's gone to a movie. She's actually, she'll ask me to go to a movie with her. Do you know that we have very little impact on that movie? It kind of runs the same. Any day you go there, it's the same. And it ends the same. The storyline never changes. 
And I think for most of our lives, we, we go to church because that's what we ought to do. Let's get up and we're going to go to church today. And but for the most part, we sit around and, and we watch the show. And uh, sometimes we feel like the 12th man, but we know we're really not. And we walk out without having any meaningful life-changing experience or conversation or anything that makes a difference in our life. We walk out and we go, well, okay, we went to church. Next week, we might go again or not. And I thought, oh, man, we got to stop going to church. Because if we go to church, we miss the whole point about what God wants to do in our life and, and in our community. And we miss it all, but we think we're doing okay because we go to church. I want this, but I want Harbor Church to be the first place where we tell people don't go to church. That should be our motto out on the sign. Forget this adventurous spirit. We're going to go, don't go to church. <laughs> Put that on the, that's a motto for the sign. What do you think? <laughs> the electric sign out there. So I look at uh, uh, Paul writing in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and, and uh, it's the some of the verse that we put on the certificates for the for the members. And it says, "I don't want you to be ignorant. You know that when you were pagan, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray by mute idols." Therefore, I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus is cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord, as many of you did today, except by the Holy Spirit. There's different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There's different kinds of service, the same Lord. There's different kinds of working, but the same God works in all of them, in all people. Now to each one of us, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. And then list a few different things. And then... Verse 12, the body is a unit, though it's made up of many parts. And though all of its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. For we're all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks or slave or free. We're all given one spirit to drink. Now the body is not made up of one part, but of many. If the foot should say, well, because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body. It was one of the whiners. It would not, for that reason, cease to be part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, cease to be part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there's many parts, but one body. Now, verse 27, you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And in the church, God's appointed apostles and prophets and teachers and workers of miracles and people who have gifts of healing, goes down through a list, some with the gifts of administration. Uh, is everybody an apostle? Is everybody a prophet? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? No, but eagerly desire the greater gifts, and I'll show you a most excellent way. And then he begins to talk about love. Now, I look at this passage, and I go, there is no way that we can be members of the body of Christ together and go to church. There's no way. Because when you go to church, you're spectating, you're watching, you're observing. Maybe you're criticizing, maybe you're critiquing, maybe you're evaluating. You're hoping maybe that it'll get through to someone else. <laughs> oh, Lord, I hope they hear this message. They need it. You know? Hey, I, I've gone to church, I know. I've done that too. I've singled out the people who really need to hear about the Lord. <laughs> And inevitably, if you stop going to church and you start being the church, pretty soon it's, wow, Lord, huh, I guess that's me. I guess this is about me. I guess this is about what you want to do in my life. I guess this is about what I need to let go of or I need to take hold of. I guess this is about what we might do together. It changes when we're part of the body. 
when we become the church. And, and we, we have different gifts. We, we start to uh, look at things differently. Um, we're, we're defined by our confession that Jesus is Lord. It says no one can say Jesus is Lord except, except by the Holy Spirit. So if we're going to profess our faith in Christ, uh, that, that's something that unites us together. Now, I'm the first to admit that, that there are some different people in this room, okay? Uh, you all know that. Just I know you're not nodding your head because you don't want to give anything away to the person next to you. But, um, you know, we are really different. This is, this is not the group that I had in mind when, when I said, okay, Lord, I'll come out here and do this. And, you know, for one, there's a few folks here who have problems. Oh, my gosh. That's shocking, isn't it? Uh, there's people here who are really smarter than me, and that makes me insecure. You know, they got better ideas and everything. And, and, uh, and there are very few people here who have unexpressed opinions. <laughs> That's a strange thing, isn't it? Uh, that people will just speak right up. <clears throat> uh, there's no place like this on earth. Anywhere. And, and we're united by only one thing. And that is, Jesus is Lord. And there's not much else. We're quite the diverse group. And, but we say, Jesus is Lord. And because we do, something changes in us. And, and, and we become a part of what God's doing in this little place in the, in the kingdom. We're part of something. And, and we may come in, you may join the church today and say, but I don't know what my part is in this. So... I think God's going to show you and may surprise you. And you may say, well, I don't know if I can do that. Or I, uh, okay. Um, and yet, because Jesus is Lord, we can be a part of something that's bigger than ourselves and goes far beyond us. And we can actually be committed to a group of people so that what happens to them matters to you. And what happens to you matters to them. And we matter to each other. That's the commitment. Uh, when when uh, the scripture says, when, when one person, one person hurts, everybody hurts. When one person celebrates, everybody celebrates. That's, that's not going to church. That's being the church. And, and, and we can't have somebody going through a hard time without it going, we've got to come around them. We've got to be strong where they're not. We have to encourage where they're needing courage. And um, because the time will come when we're going to be the one who's needy. And it'll turn. I mean, it's really beautiful that, that uh, Charlotte... Uh, invites us into her world. It's, she didn't know she was. <laughs> we just showed up at her party. But, um, you know, but she allows us to be the church around her and say, you matter to us. We love you. We, we're walking through this with you. We, wanna, we want to go through this with you. And uh, no simple answers, no quick fixes or anything like that. It's we're going to go through this. And um, I'll tell you what, that is a profound gift that we can give to one another. Because every one of us is going to go through stuff. And, you know, I've been in churches where that's where you go when it's all working well. You know, yeah, let's all go to church because we finally got it together. You know, I had an associate pastor in charge of new members when I went to Walnut Creek in California, and he would... Throw people out of the new members class, not let them join if he felt that they weren't quite there yet. <laughs> and this one lady, 86 years old, came up to me crying at my office. She said, he called me and I thought he wanted me to be a small group facilitator in the next class, but he told me that I couldn't come because I had these problems in my life. And so I couldn't join the church. You know, there's very little things that piss off a pastor more than here. <laughs> right, right there. Right, right there. So... He was able to enjoy his ministry in Texas. 
<laughs> but the thing, and I, and I would look at him and say, this is the start. This is not the final glory. This is the start. Well, you know, we come in with all our stuff and, and the Lord does something with us and works with us and helps us live beyond ourself, right? That's what he does. And uh, I was tired of, you know, my, as a kid driving the church, my, we'd be in the back, the four kids, and my dad swatting over the seat, you know, <laughs> tell us to be quiet and keep your hands to yourself. And, you know, and then when we get to church, we park the car and it's, okay, everybody, put your best face on. <laughs> it's the only one I got. <laughs> Wipe that smile off your face, Johnny. <laughs> you know, because we're going to church. Uh, what a phony thing that was, you know? And then I realized every car that pulled up was having the same conversation. <laughs> Let's get it all together quick so we can make a good impression. Well, I'm so grateful that none of you have gotten it together to come in here. <laughs> that is horribly apparent. <laughs> One more part of this I want to bring out. Not only are we united in our confession that Jesus is Lord, and not only are we committed to each other, and when one hurts, we all hurt, and one celebrates, we all celebrate. There's another part of this. Everyone is valuable. And, and that must never be forgotten. Everybody's valuable. There's no weak links, that, or there's nobody that we vote off the island and they have to put their <laughs> torch out. Okay, you're out of the show, you know, because we're getting to be a better place, you know. It's not this the strong survive here. Actually, it's more the weak survive here, honestly. And the strength comes, you know, what you say, uh, Paul writes in, in the New Testament, uh, when I am weak, then I'm strong. Why? Because it's Christ's strength in me that I only experience when I'm weak. If I'm strong and capable and I don't need the Lord, well, then I got me. But if I'm weak and uncertain and I need the Lord to get through today or this situation or whatever, then, or this conversation, then the Lord's power is there and it's so much better than mine. I'll tell you what, I've been a preacher for way, way too long, and I know, and I've been preaching for way too long today, but um, the thing is that, um, I realized, and I used to teach preaching at, at Fuller Seminary, and I, and I realized when, when I thought I really had a cool message, and I was really excited to give it, it stunk. <laughs> it, <clears throat> and, and I found that week after week, I'd, I'd sit in my office and go, Lord, I don't have anything. I, I used all my stories last week. I got nothing. And, and it was like, Lord went, Okay, just get out of the way. Get out of the way. You know, I've got something to say to my people. If you can just quit interrupting me. <laughs> and, uh, and I think there's something about it. his power is made perfect in our weakness. And so because of that, we're all valuable. Everybody's valuable. Uh, last week, all our Sunday school workers were gone. And Karen steps up and says, I'll go love the kids for an hour. Mm -hmm. You know, I can do that. And I, I asked her afterwards, so how'd it go? You know, thinking that maybe she was crushed beneath the flow, you know. <laughs> she goes, oh, those are the most wonderful kids. They had such amazing answers and they were so interesting. Remember you told me that? Yeah, and, and I thought, wow, wow, that makes me want to do it. So I'm thinking, I'm, here's what I'm going to do. It may be in December. Uh, are you, you preaching December 5th, uh, 8th? 8th, yes. I'm going to volunteer and, and work with the kids in the Sunday school. I'll be here for the singing, don't worry. You know, uh, And then I'll go in with the kids, and I hope I live through it. <laughs> Lord, do a miracle. <laughs> Help me not to hurt them. You know? <laughs> Is that okay to do? If she can do it, I can do it, right? <laughs> Well, we don't. <laughs> I'll tell you what, on that Sunday, there's going to be some parents praying like they've never prayed before. <laughs> Protect our child from the pastor. <laughs> okay, that'd be, okay, that's our deal then. Okay, you, you preach it and I'll, and I'll, uh, 
I'll go in there and <laughs> bring the neighbor in the <laughs> I'm going to ask Karen to help me. <laughs> anyway, you know, the, the whole point of this is, who are we becoming? What does God want to do in us? We started out, we didn't have a roadmap. We didn't have a plan. We didn't have an agenda. Uh, remember some of you were in that meeting in that house, and uh, we had a little piece of paper, and we wrote up here, what, what kind of church would God want us to do? And we wrote down, you know, different things. And... Uh, I tried to find it this week to bring it out and show you, but I couldn't find it. And uh, it's all right. Uh, but I bet if we went down that list, we'd go, "Wow, he's doing it. We're we're be we're being the church here. We're not going to church. You can go to church anywhere. You can throw a rock and hit ten churches to go to. But you can be the church here. So I thank you for the gift of of you and what you bring and who you are." Hard stuff and good stuff, all of it. And I thank you for the privilege of uh, renewing my faith that God can do something in our lives. That, that's been part of the healing for me. So, so welcome, welcome to church. And uh, let me pray with you, Lord Jesus. We do, we do thank you that you call us to be your your body, your hands and feet and eyes and ears in this world. And uh, we don't know what that means always, and we sometimes get off base, but thank you that we have some fellow travelers to go through this with. And I thank you for each person in this room and the gift that they are and uh, the way that they make a difference here and help us never to lose sight of uh, our, our unity in you and our commitment to each other and our value in the kingdom. So we give ourselves and we give our church and we give our whole lives to you, in Jesus' name.